So let's compare time weighted rate of return and and money weighted rate of return okay and understand which method is used in uh, in you know in performance uh, measurement this time weighted rate of return is also called as geometric mean and this money weighted rate of return is also called as irr okay so first we will find out time weighted rate of return so let's take an example so i draw a timeline over here 0 1 2 so let's say i'm investing 100 here and then at the end of uh, first year it comes to 120 okay so it has grown at the rate of 20 percentage and then again i'm investing uh, 120 and so overall this uh, comes to at the end of second year the share price comes to 130 and this comes to 130 so overall i have 260 at the end of the second year so how do i find out time weighted rate of return okay so so when i say time weighted rate of return or geometric mean what it means is time weighted for each period what is the return like over here it is 20 percentage for the first period and for the second period uh, it has grown from you know 240 it is as good as i have invested you know 240 because each period is considered separate so in the second period you know 120 and then again 120 i have invested so it is as good as my amount of 240 is there in the market which has grown to 260 okay so that comes to 260 divided by 240 if i do um, that comes to 260 divided by 240 minus 1 okay. 260 divided by 240 minus 1 that comes to 8.33 percentage 8.33 percentage so for the second period the growth is 8.33 percentage so how do i find out the time weighted rate of return for this so all i have to do is 1 plus rate of return in the first period so which is 20 percentage then into okay into uh, rate of return for the second period 1 plus 8.33 percentage and i am supposed to uh, average it out so for each period what is the rate of return so i am supposed to average it out to average it out i do to the power 1 by 2 because this is for two periods so it is 1 by n actually okay and then i do minus 1 as i am adding up 1 over here so i do minus 1 so calculating this i'll get 1.20 into 1 1.083 to the power 0 0.5 because 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 minus 1 so what i'll get is 14 percentage so my time weighted rate of return is 14 percentage which is also called as geometric mean 14 percentage now coming to uh, the next one money weighted rate of return okay so money weighted rate of return money weighted rate of return so how do i do so i am taking the same example initially 100 invested okay so in money weighted rate of return which is also called as internal rate of return so here just remember two words cash inflow and cash outflow okay so this is my cash outflow 100 i am investing and then at the end of the first year it becomes 120 okay and then again i'm investing 120 at the end of the second year it becomes this 120 becomes 130 120 this becomes 130 so i'm getting 260 at the end of the second year and at the end of the first year you know again these are cash outflows 120 so this is cash outflow and this is cash outflows 
and this is my cash inflows. So based on this cash outflow and inflow, we are going to calculate the IRR or money weighted rate of return. Cash inflow. Okay. So uh, if I have to do this manually, how I can do this is so what is IRR? Uh, it, the rate of return. So what we have to find out is IRR is the rate of return is the rate of return at which at which present value of cash outflow is equal to present value of cash uh, inflows okay so both will be equal okay so that means i can say so if i shift this present value of cash outflows to the right hand side it will be minus present value of cash outflows okay plus present value of cash inflows will be equal to zero okay so minus cash outflows so minus is 100 first 100 then so again i'm doing this timeline so minus 100 and then here minus so i'll bring this 120 here so 120 minus and then here i'm going to get 260 so these are the cash flows okay so how do i find out so let me bring everything to the present value so i just discount it one plus irr to the power one and then here one plus irr to the power two so when i do this what i'll get is you know irr comes to Okay, so when I do this minus 100, so minus 100 and then minus 120 divided by 1 plus IRR to the power 1. Okay, and then uh, 260 divided by 1 plus IRR to the power 2. Okay, so when I calculate all this, it comes to so the IRR will come to 12.05 percentage, 12.05 percentage. You can do this in uh, BA2, uh, BA2 Texas Calci as well. So if you do in BA2 Texas Calci, you have to go to the cash flow function. There CF0, so cash flow initially, you have to keep it as uh, minus 100. Okay, then cash flow 1, you have to keep it as minus 120. Okay, and then cash flow 2, you have to keep it as plus 260. Uh, go for IRR, compute, you will get 12.05 percentage. Okay, so you see for the same number, um, money weighted uh, rate of return comes to 12.05 and time weighted rate of return comes to 14 percentage so time weighted rate of return so time weighted rate of return is is higher than money weighted rate of return okay and this is used in performance measurement in an investment performance measurement okay in an investments in an investment okay now why this irr is lower okay 12.05 the reason is you see you are getting the maximum amount at the end which is 260 and you are discounting it for two periods so when you discount it for longer period you know the the uh, the amount will come to the lower side okay so that's why this amount becomes smaller and so the rate of uh, the rate of return is also smaller over here whereas in uh, time weighted rate of return you are calculating for each period you are calculating for each period so that's the reason this is higher than uh, money weighted rate of return where you are discounting for more than one one uh, year okay that's it thank you